In this video, we're gonna take a look at this ESP-based terminal from Elecro. There's a lot packed into this little unit, making it a great all-in-one solution for electronics and microcontroller-based robotics projects that need a screen. I'm also gonna be having a go at hooking it into MicroROS, which I've never used before, and see where that takes me. This is primarily a review of the unit and an exploration of the kind of projects you could do with it, and not so much a tutorial. If you do want tutorials though, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do down the track. Let's start by opening it up. Now it's worth saying that Elecro did send me this unit for review, but they're not paying me and they haven't told me what things I have to say. So they shipped it to me in a bigger box that had some packaging and this nice little sticker. Uh, but then we've got the box that contains the actual unit. So inside there we've got a USB cable, some packaging and the unit itself. So this is the Elecro 3.5 inch SPI ESP32 terminal, and this thing is absolutely packed with features. To start off with, it's got an ESP32 microcontroller, that means Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, serial and so on, but then it also has a 480 by 320 SPI screen attached. This is a capacitive touchscreen, which makes it nice to interact with, and on top of that, it's got a microphone, an OV2640 camera, micro SD card slot, a buzzer, and some sockets on the back that let us connect to batteries and other devices. In theory, this looks great. So let's try it out and then we'll be able to see what works well and what doesn't. And we'll be able to talk about some ways that you might be able to use it in your projects. I'll start off by having a go of some of the example code and tutorials that it comes with, but I'm especially keen to try and get MicroROS running on this thing because I've not used MicroROS before, and judging by some of the comments that I've seen on my other videos, a lot of you are interested in it. The online documentation provides some example code and instructions on how to get things set up using the Arduino IDE. This is where I ran into my first hurdle. The linked code was actually for the wrong product, and I had to contact support and get them to fix it, which they now have. I also had some trouble getting all the libraries that it depends on installed correctly. Once you've got it all set up though, it's pretty straightforward. Using the Arduino IDE is really handy, it's very easy to use and familiar for many people. And here is the main demo showing off the touchscreen. You can see it's not the fastest screen, but apart from that it works pretty well. I wouldn't want to use it to watch a video or play games, but for simple touch controls or displaying feedback for a system, it's totally usable. If the speed is a problem for you, there's an alternative screen option as we'll see later. That demo was using LVGL, which is a popular graphics library for these kinds of embedded systems. To make it a bit easier to work with, there is another piece of software you can download called Squareline Studio that lets you design interfaces graphically. And I mean, have a look at some of these demos. They look really cool. I haven't tried it myself though. I've only done the UI design in code and that's been pretty basic. We'll see that soon. Another one of the examples shows how we can use the screen to display the camera feed here. Now, it's no cinema camera, but I'm sure you can use it for basic facial recognition, color detection, security monitoring, and so on. Remember, this thing has Wi-Fi, so you can beam the data back to another machine if you need to. There are a bunch of other demos provided, but I'm much more interested in trying out MicroROS. If you've not heard of MicroROS, it's a library that makes it easy to interface microcontrollers, like this ESP board, with ROS2. You can set up publishers and subscribers and so on. If you've not heard of ROS, then you can check out one of my many other videos on the topic. This time, instead of using the Arduino IDE, I've set it up using VS Code with ESP IDF and the micro ROS component. I haven't really spent a lot of time making a fancy interface, but you can see there are a couple of buttons. It'll use these to drive the robot, so it's going to publish a twist message up to the rest of ROS to use as input for robot control. And then it's also subscribing to another topic for diagnostic values that it'll show down on this little meter. And because this thing can communicate over Wi-Fi, it doesn't need to be plugged in via a serial connection. I've got it powered off a USB battery bank, but you can also connect it to a single cell LiPo using the connection on the back. Here you can see it driving an actual robot around with speed feedback. Pretty neat. I'll be honest, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. It's a while since I've spent much time in the microcontroller space, but I know it can be tedious to track down compatible hardware, figure out how to wire it, realize you got it backwards and shorted something out, find some example code that actually works and so on. Now, if you're designing a highly customized product or you're just doing this for fun, 
then it's fine to spend hours on AliExpress trying to track down exactly the right components that are a good fit for your project. But if you just want something that works and has everything all together, I think this is the way to go. You get the touch screen, the microphone, the camera, the micro SD, the buzzer, and even if you don't need all of those things, the time saved in just assembling things together is worth it. It even comes with two little mounting holes on the back to make things easier. At the moment, it's 40 US dollars on Elecro's website, and it's worth noting that they also have a slightly different model for 34 US dollars, with a much better screen, but it sacrifices the camera, microphone, and some connectivity. I can see this being a useful tool in robotics and automation as a relatively low cost way to set up an HMI, or potentially even onboard a mobile robot. Although I haven't looked too closely at the power consumption and whether the screen and camera and so on are drawing much power when not in use. So that's probably something you wanna consider if you're needing to run it off a battery or otherwise keep it low energy. One project I'm thinking about trying it out for is I've got a mate who homebrews and wants a system that monitors the keg weights, shows on the screen how much is remaining and also sends that data off to Home Assistant so that he can monitor it on his phone. And I think this is perfect for that. So as you can probably tell, I like it. It's only let down by the slightly confusing documentation, tutorials, and example code. If it wasn't for that, I'd probably say it's a great beginner product. That being said, if you want some tutorials on how to get started with this thing, especially on using it with MicroROS, I can potentially do that. Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this first review video. I'm hoping to have a greater variety of content on here as time goes on, helping people with all sorts of different aspects of robotics development, and reviews are just one part of that. Thanks Elecro for sending me the screen, and thanks so much to all the patrons who make this channel possible. As always, if you want to help out and support the channel, there's a link down in the description. If you've got any other ideas of ways to use this thing, or you're planning on doing something with it yourself, some kind of project, please share it with us all in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.